Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. My name is Nita. I'll be guiding practice. I just like to remind you what day of the week it is. What's funny is I've always done that. Those of you who know me know I've always done that. Now it seems more critical, but um, for years I've been a stay-at-home mom, and so I always kind of needed that reminder what day of the week it is. So now it's just like a big joke. Anyway, it's Monday, so let's start seated. I love beginning on Monday morning in a seat, not because it's easy. It's actually harder for me on a Monday morning. Um, just after the weekend and whatever we were doing, um, Mrs. Gam was talking about, you know, things that we do on the weekend. We were doing a lot of gardening and landscaping and really, really tight today. So I'm really looking forward as well to some of this movement. But I want to start seated so that we have a chance to build your brain body connection, your brain body breath connection will come after that connection is established. So as you sit tall, just notice where your knees are. You don't have to worry if they're up by your chest. Uh, I don't know if you can see me, but if you can see me, if they're up like this, don't worry about it. It's okay. And if you have to hold on to them and wrap your arms around them, that's okay too. We're trying to build connection, not alienation from our body by um, trying to conform to some other idea that we're not. So I would much rather you be connected and feel gratitude for what you do have with you this morning. And so however you're seated, just lengthen your spine, gently close your eyes. So the length in your spine, the reason that's important is because it helps distribute your weight of your upper body evenly onto the ground below you. It also helps open up heart space. When you sit up with a long spine, your shoulders will just naturally, you don't even have to ask for it, just fall back and down. So you have a chance to have a little bit more open chest, a little more open heart, and then your lungs can fill with the breath that you need for this practice. Gently close your lips if they're not. Allow your tongue to be soft, your jaw to be soft, maybe a little space between your teeth. And then begin to relax the muscles of your face. Relax the backside of your head. Relax your jaw, relax your neck, relax your shoulders, relax your upper arms, relax your elbows, relax your lower arms, relax your wrists, relax your hands, relax the front side of your torso here we'll engage a little bit press all of your air out so draw a little bit in with your belly to get your air out then take a full deep breath in expanding everything then exhale maybe you find you're sitting a little taller relax your upper back relax your middle back relax your lower back Relax your pelvis, relax your thighs, relax your knees, relax your lower legs, relax your ankles, relax your feet. Come back through your body with your brain now, touching on any parts that would like you to linger a little bit. Our body whispers to us all the time things that physically you need to pay attention to and so often our to-do list is much uh, more prevalent in our attention span and so our body gets sort of a back seat so bring your body up to the front seat right here with you <clears throat> on your mat so be where your body is be where your feet are notice the things that want attention then send some gratitude to any part of your body or parts that are doing some healing on your behalf so that you feel strong and robust and balanced. <clears throat> could be something energetically that's healing. It could be an emotion that's healing. It could be a pinky finger. Anything can show up here. Body does know how to heal all the things. If you will give it time and attention and listen, be an attentive listener. Bring your hands together at heart center and then set an intention for your practice. You just had some gratitude for healing. Whatever your intention is will put you on the path. 
so, and maybe you're already on that path and you want to stay on it. So either way, your intention starts with I am, I have, I feel, keep it very present tense. And finish your exhale and we'll breathe together. Big, full, deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Full inhale. Exhale. Open up your eyes and very gently bring your hands in front of you. So just let your, maybe your fingertips start on the floor and then maybe start walking your hands a little bit forward. Give your hips a little bit deeper of a stretch and maybe even your low back a little bit of a release as well. Just notice. So your eyes could be set right on maybe your fingertips as you walk them forward. See if, so when I, naturally stop the forward movement the next step for me is always what part of my spine could come forward a little bit more so that I always have a long spine even in this forward fold notice if your knees and ankles are okay you're moving away from center with your knees so that can be tricky sometimes very gently start to walk your hands to the right I need to get my watch so I know what time it is. When you're to the right, breathe. You could tip your head one direction or the other so that you have a chance to explore one side of your neck as you do this work. Breathe and be willing to spend attention and time. Then slowly walk back over to the center. Take a full breath in and out there. Eventually start to walk your hands to the left. Notice when you get them there, where you stop, what's going on. Maybe you tilt your head one way or the other. And breathe. Come back to center. Still maybe a little bit in the fold, maybe halfway out. Doesn't matter. And then eventually come up. Release your knees so that your feet are flat to the floor. We'll move into a seated cow and cat. So with your feet flat to the floor, about hip distance apart, some of you might want to reach behind your thighs. Some of you will wrap your hands around your knees. I tend to like that one more. You could also just put your hands on the floor. As you breathe in, front side of your spine lifts up and forward for a seated cow. As you exhale, back side of your spine pushes behind you, chin tucks in for seated cat. Do another one of those, seated cow, inhale, and then move to seated cat, exhale. Come back to a neutral spine, move to tabletop pose on your mat, and then do two more cow and cats in tabletop, hands are Shoulder distance apart, knees are hip distance apart. Chin and seat lift with your inhale. As you exhale, back side of your spine lifts up to the ceiling for a cow pose. Cat pose. Come back to cow, inhale. And then another cat pose with your exhale. My words are not coming out quite yet. And then neutral spine, curl your toes under, and then slowly press your hips back so you stretch out your feet a little. I want you here getting a sense of the corners of the balls of your feet if you can, if you can get your toes really curled under you and feel just that ridge line right behind your toes on your mat. Stretch out the balls of your feet a little, also stretch out your toes. Maybe even you'll feel this in your knees, depending on what you've been doing lately. Then slowly, very, very slowly, start to push into what you're feeling on your mat to lift your knees about an inch away. Gaze is right in between your hands as slowly as you can. Come into your downward facing dog. 
So very similar to when we ask you to come into a mountain pose slowly, come into your down dog slowly, let your knees be bent a lot, let your elbows be bent a lot, just explore and express your body's knees through the movement and the transition getting to downward facing dog. Notice now the connection of your feet on your mat. So you have a spread of the balls of your feet across your mat. Your toes might be there. You can try lifting your toes just to see what happens. You could lift your heels up a little higher and then relax them down. All the stretches we do for the front and back side of our feet and ankles, calves and shins. Then do the same thing, that same process through your hands. So notice what parts of your hands are pressing in. Add more pressure here or there to help even out the balance and weight across your wrist. Then set your drishti. So where are your eyes going to go every time you come back into down dog this morning so that you are on your mat for your practice, not necessarily in your home that needs some attention somewhere, but really stay on your mat. So setting your drishti on your mat or on your body in down dog is really helpful to staying close. To the center of what this practice is. Finish your exhale. Take a big full deep breath in. As you exhale, look to your hands and walk forward for ragdoll pose. Feet land hip distance apart. Think of draping your upper body over your legs. So for me, that sort of starts at the waistline and then eventually moves until the crown of my head is facing the floor. Then hands come up, maybe the biceps, maybe the inside edges of your elbows. And then there's still a process of coming in, maybe lengthening your legs, drawing your weight forward so your seat lifts a little higher. Again, keep your eyes on your mat or on your body. If closing your eyes helps you come inward, you can always do that at any time in this practice. Sometimes closing your eyes will take you outward. So it's up to you and it depends. All the time things change. Hands come down to your mat. Bring your feet together. Lift up halfway. Take a breath in and on this halfway lift, put your hands on your shins and push into them a little. So you get the sense that pushing will give you the sense of the energy of this halfway lift and what it's designed to do in terms of opening your chest and lengthening your spine. Your exhale, go ahead and fold. Come into another halfway lift without the push. See if you see where the energy is. You could touch your shins. Just notice how different they are and what you can recreate that's the same. Your exhale, fold. Then press your feet down, come up, mountain pose, inhale, look up, reach up, notice your foundation and the strength that rises from that. Finish your exhale here. Take another full breath in, reach a little higher, exhale and fold in half. Halfway lift, inhale, plant your hands, step your feet back to high plank. From here, we'll warm up shoulders and wrists just a little bit. So feet are about hip distance apart behind you. Elbows in this plank pose point to the back of your mat. Lower down halfway. Stay as long as you'd like. And then press back up to high plank. Do that again. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lower halfway. Come back up to high plank. This time, all the way down to your bellies. Take a breath in and lower down to your mat. Chin touches, so let your face come a little bit forward. Tops of your feet come down, big toes touch. Lift up with an inhale for a baby cobra. Lower down with your exhale. Relax everything, relax your hips, your low back. Let it soften. Draw your elbows a little closer together. Feet press in, lift up for another baby cobra. Everything tenses and tightens a little bit. Then let all of it release as you come down. 
pause there in the release, letting your body feel what release is like. Then draw your elbows together, feet plus down, come up again for a baby cobra. Lower down with your exhale, then either high plank or tabletop with your inhale, and downward facing dog with your exhale. For Sun A's this morning, I'll cue Cobra. If you prefer upward facing dog, just take that on your own. If this is one of those times where you have a lot of energy and you want to give a lot, then that's a, that's a great choice. It'll take a little bit more energy. Finish your exhale, breathing and moving all in sync. Take a big full breath in, empty it, look to your hands, step or hop forward, halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale, mountain pose, press your feet down, rise up, fold with your exhale, halfway lift, inhale, Plant your hands, step back, and lower to your bellies for a cobra. Inhale, come back down with your exhale. Tabletop or high plank, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Might feel a little mechanical, but we'll work that out. Take a big full breath in, empty it. Look to your hands, walk forward or hop. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale, mountain pose, reach up, fold, exhale, halfway lift, inhale, plant your hands, step your feet back, and lower down to your bellies, cobra pose, inhale, back down with your exhale, tabletop or high plank, to downward facing dog, big breath in. And your hands float or walk forward, halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale, mountain pose, breathe in, fold, and release. Halfway lift, plant your hands, step back, lower down to your bellies. And one more cobra, breathe in. Come back to the ground with your exhale. Tabletop or high plank to downward facing dog. Pause here. Pedal out. Notice any sort of places in your body again that are looking for that attention, that are looking for the gratitude, that are looking for more breath maybe. And then finish your exhale, take a big full breath in, empty it, look to your hands, float or walk forward, halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale, chair pose, hips go back, that will bring weight back to your heels, arms can float up. If you don't feel a sense of float in your arms, if when you lift your arms, you get an incredible amount of tension in your shoulders, in your middle back, in your lower back, take your arms behind you and interlace your fingers. Focus instead on opening your chest. One place for your eyes. Stay very focused and then try to deepen where you can in chair. <clears throat> so chair builds a lot of stability, a lot of heat, starts to work a little bit of balance. So notice any one of those areas where you immediately feel a change in your body. Finish your exhale. If your hands are interlaced, come back to chair pose with your inhale. Exhale and fold. Halfway lift. Inhale. Plant your hands. Step your feet back. This time, lower halfway down for Chaturanga. Tops of your feet down into your mat. Arms grow tall. Hips come forward. Shoulders down. Downward facing dog. So if you try that and it doesn't work for you today, come back to Cobra for your flow. You can always do that. I'll be queuing upward facing dog, but you always have a choice. Lift your right leg. 
bend your knee. So first start lengthening your thigh and then start to draw your hips open to the side wall. Shoulders stay facing the ground. Eyes stay wherever your drishti is in down dog. And breathe. See if you can lift your knee a little higher. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lengthen your leg long. Take another inhale here. Exhale, step your foot to the top of your mat. Spin your back heel down. Come up, warrior two. So a wide stance. Let yourself start to sink and open into your flexibility, into strength. Float your hands right above your feet. And again, if you don't have a sense of floating, if something's going on in your shoulders, one or both, take that piece out. Warrior two is not defined by your arms floating. You can define it any way you want to. These are just all the cues that we have that help you understand maybe the spiritual component of this pose. All right, finish your exhale. Take a breath in. Move to extended side angle. So front forearm can come across your thigh or across the front side of your body. Top arm reaches up and over. Stay with your warrior two legs. So maybe you start to bend your front knee a little more. Maybe you're ready for that challenge. And just reach for a longer side body. Finish your exhale. Come back to warrior two. Flip your front palm and lay back. Reverse warrior. Again, your front knee bends. So if you came out for your reverse warrior, come back into that. Finish your exhale, take a breath in. As you exhale, bring your hands down to your mat, back heel spins up, step back and lower halfway. Upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Take a full deep breath in here. Empty it. Left leg lifts with your inhale. Bend your knee, work your heel toward your seat, lengthen out your thigh a little bit, your muscle, and then open up your hips to the side wall. Keep pressing your hands evenly down. <clears throat> Keep running your breath through your body, scanning for parts now. Maybe you've got a different message of what needs breath. Your inhale, lengthen your leg, stay for the exhale. Take another breath in. As you exhale, step your foot to the top of your mat. Back heel spins down. Come up, warrior two. Separate your feet a lot. Bend your knee a lot. Whatever a lot is for you. Float your hands. <clears throat> Find that point for your eyes to settle. It will quiet your mind just a little bit. It may be so much, it might be such a small difference, you don't notice it, but it is real. It does happen. Finish your exhale. Keep your warrior two legs. As you exhale, extended side angle. So again, options, forearm across your thigh, or hand reaches for your back foot. So you've got one hand reaching one direction, one hand reaching the other, crossing the midline of your body. Keep your drishti in one place. No judgment, no labeling. It's just you looking. And then slowly with your exhale, back to warrior two. Flip your front palm and lay back for reverse warrior. More side body opening. We don't do a lot of that during our daytime activities. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, hands come down to your mat, spin your back heel up, then step back and lower halfway. Upward facing dog, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. <clears throat> Breathing in, send it out. Do that again, big full breath in. Send it out. Look to your hands, float or walk forward. 
Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Bring your weight back into your heels, chair pose, inhale, fold, exhale. Halfway lift, plant your hands, step or float back for chaturanga. Upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Right leg lifts. Take a breath in, step forward, exhaling. Warrior two, come up, plant your feet. Extended side angle, start reaching away from your feet. Come back to reverse warrior. And hands down to your mat, step back, lower. Upward facing dog, breathe in, downward facing dog, send it out. Left leg lifts. Step forward. Warrior two, inhale. Extended side angle. Exhale. Reverse. Hands come down to your mat. Step back and lower. Upward facing. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Full deep breath in here. Empty it. Look to your hands. Float or walk forward. Halfway lift. Feet across your mat. Fold. Weights in the balls of your feet. Chair pose. Weight comes into your heels. Then fold. Weight comes back into the balls of your feet. Halfway lift. It's spread across. Plant your hands. Step back. Lower halfway. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing, exhale, right leg lift, step forward, <clears throat> warrior two, extended side angle, reverse, and hands to your mat, press the ground away as you step back and lower. Press the ground away as you come to upward facing and downward facing dog. Left leg lift, step forward. Warrior two, extended side angle, reverse, and hands to your mat. Step back and lower. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Pause here, a little pedal, maybe your hips sway side to side, maybe your head needs to relax a little more, your neck. Pay attention to where your tension goes in this practice. Then come back to stillness, finish your exhale, take a big full breath in. Empty it, look to your hands, float or walk forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale, chair pose. Come back in, we're gonna hold this one a little bit. So look down to see that you can see your toes. I sometimes shift my weight here too. I know it's in the, in the heels of my feet, but I kind of go side to side here a little too to get a sense of when my knees are facing forward, especially as we prepare for a twist. Bring your hands together at heart center. Understand forward for your knees and your hips. Take a breath in. As you exhale, upper body turns to the right. Sink your hips down to bring your elbow toward your knee. And then just pause there. Just notice why your body stopped where it did. For me, a lot of times I notice it's my shins that are stopping me. They just can't stretch any farther than that. And that's okay. Then open your hands, maybe floor to ceiling. You could also open them front to back. So to the wall in front of you and the wall behind you. See if once you've opened, you can bring more weight into the heels of your feet. Keep moving back. Take another breath in. As you exhale, fold in half. <clears throat> Separate your feet hip distance. Gorilla pose. Stand on your hands. We're going to stay a little bit active with this one. So the process of stepping on your hands, so your palms are face up, 
brings you into a little bit of a halfway lift. So go ahead and come into a full halfway lift with an inhale, then fold with your exhale. A very small change maybe for some of you. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, and exhale. Now pause here. If you still, if that movement is working for you and bringing some magic, continue to do that flow of halfway lift and fold. If you are better served with stillness, then that's the course you pick. Release your feet. Bring them back together. Lift halfway. Maybe press on your shins for this one. Then fold. Come up mountain pose, reach up, and then interlace your fingers above you. Look up right in between your palms. Middle finger and thumb, are, or not middle finger, index finger and thumb are straight, so they're not interlaced. Just the last three fingers. Look up right in between your palms. Take a breath in. As you exhale, take a back bend here. So you draw your hands behind you. Spine and hips move forward, lungs lift up, heart space opens wider across your chest, slowly come back to neutral, hands, your fingers stop interlacing, so hands separate, take a breath in, fold with your exhale, and back to chair pose. So notice the weight shifting around in your feet. Chair pose, the weight when you draw your arms up shifts through your shoulders and chest. Hands come together at heart center. Take a breath in. As you exhale, twist to the left. Sink your hips down to bring your elbow toward your knee. Notice where you naturally stop. Check on your knees and hips. Then if you like, open up your hands, floor to ceiling. Notice here, could you bring weight back into your heels a little more? It's such a small shift, but it has big results. Finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, fold in half. Separate your feet. Big toe hold. So peace fingers and thumb wrap around your big toes. Come into a halfway lift and then fold. Do that again. Halfway lift and fold. And stay here or keep moving. Set your eyes. If you look, come in, if you're going into the movement, you keep coming into halfway lift and fold. Just find that place for your eyes to reach every time. Good, and then release your toes. Bring your feet back together. Halfway lift, inhale. Plant your hands, step back to high plank. Bring your feet together, inside edges. Bring your forearms down to your mat. So hips are in line with shoulders, which are in line with your head. Gaze is just a little bit forward. With the inside edges of your feet together, take both heels to the right, and then lift your left arm up for forearm plank. Up to you if you want to lift your top leg. I've been working a lot more on what's going on down close to the ground than what I'm doing up above. So I've been not lifting my leg just to see what happens. Take another breath in. As you exhale, bring your forearm down. Heels come up to center and then take them to the left. Right away, go into the other side. Lift your arm, hand stacks right on top of your shoulders so that your joint is very stable. Same thing on your bottom arm. Shoulder is stacked right on top of your elbow on your mat. Lots of stability there. Take another breath in. As you exhale, come back to your forearm. So you're back to forearm plank twice. I want you to plant your hands and come to high plank and then back down to forearm plank. So there's one. Do it again. Two. Good. Come back down. Then from here, just pause. Count to five as slowly as you can. 
When you finish, you come back to high plank and then press back to downward facing dog. And I'm going to keep counting five, four, three, two, one. High plank and downward facing dog. So downward facing dog, check that your feet are hip distance apart. Maybe walk them in just a little. So just shorten your down dog by an inch or two. And then start with your exhale to walk your hands back toward your feet. So you're at the back of your mat now with your upper body draping down and relaxing over your legs. Let, let your hands be a little more firm. Let your right knee bend a lot. Then bend your heel toward your seat. Come up into standing split and breathe. The splits is splitting the distance between your feet. Use your glute muscles to lift your leg. Good, finish your exhale. Take a breath in. As you exhale, release your right foot down next to your left. Come into a halfway lift and then fold. Let your whole upper body relax here. Then hands become a little more solid, left knee bends. Start to pick your left heel up toward your seat. Standing split. And breathe. And open. Anything, maybe you're opening your judgment, opening your expectations. Yeah, I'm always about opening space between your feet. Take another breath in. As you exhale, left foot comes back down. So that, that movement, standing splits, is a closed hip. We're going to move to open hip here. So if you'd like a block or a water bottle underneath your left hand, left hand's going to stay down. Right knee bends again. Work your heel toward your seat. And then open up your hips, just like you did in that three-legged downward-facing dog and move into half moon pose. So take it slow, take it easy. See if you can lengthen your spine like you did when you were seated so that you have full breath available. Top leg is lifted and energized. Top arm is lifted and energized. Gaze is steady. Take another breath in. As you exhale, hand and foot come back down to your mat. Pause there. Any sort of movement that gets you released from that tension. Now right hand stays down on a block, a water bottle, maybe just on the ground. Start to lift your left or bend your left knee. Lift your heel toward your seat. And then take your hips open very much the same way you did your three-legged down dog. Arm starts to follow, leg starts to lengthen. Gaze can be down or to a side wall or even up to your top hand. Top toes point toward your face. Maybe bottom hand floats. Take a breath in. As you exhale, hand and foot come down to your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale, come up mountain pose, reach up, breathe in, fold with your exhale, halfway lift with your inhale, as you exhale, start to walk your hands forward, keep your knees bent, so you're coming back into a tabletop with bent knees floating, we call this crouching dog sometimes. Then slowly set your knees down, walk your hands forward, come down onto your bellies. Turn one cheek to the side, arms relax, and let everything relax down. Notice that sense of coming close to the ground, that downward pull, that downward release, and then the breath that you bring in rises up to meet the back side of your body and expand and relax it. Good. 
Bring your chin and forehead neutral. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Feet can be about hip distance apart here. So there is a process when you interlace your fingers of getting your shoulders where you want them, your elbows. Take your time to do that. You can leave your hands on your low back. Draw your shoulders away from your mat. So already you have some chest opening. Then with your inhale, lift everything up. Maybe arms lengthen, maybe hands lift away from your back. Press the front side of your pelvis in. If you can peel up, maybe one more little bit of your chest away from your mat. Use that downward pull and release to build strength. Then slowly with your exhale, come back down. Turn your other cheek to the side and relax your arms. Notice the sensation. Notice how everything moves closer to the ground, but your breath lifts up. This is such a good place to notice how your breath really is a life force, really is a practice by itself. Bring your chin and forehead back to neutral. Hands come underneath your shoulders to start. So notice you've got this angle between your shoulders and your elbows. Bring your big toes to touch. And then one forearm comes to the floor, very much like forearm plank. Bring your other forearm in. Elbows stack underneath your shoulders. Forearms press down. Fingertips are pointing forward. Widen your hands. So you have a big base of support. This is Sphinx Pose. When you get a little lifted here, you might be able to push your hips down, but also pull forward a little using a little pressing down of your elbows and forearms. It might create a deeper back bend for you. You could also, in that process of pushing and pulling, you start to lengthen your arms, moving to seal pose, which can deepen the back bend if you need it. There's a lot of tension here created between lengthening the front side of your body and, and folding into the back side. Very slowly come away from this pose, setting everything down. Arms at your sides, turn a cheek. If that bothers your neck, simply stack your palms underneath your forehead. And one more of those. Turn your forehead to your mat and then stack your palms underneath your forehead. So one hand to the floor, palm down. Other palm goes on top of that hand. Forehead rests on your hands, elbows are wide, side wall to side wall, feet are together, top of your feet press down so your legs are engaged and a little lifted, but feet stay grounded. With an inhale, lift just your upper body, keep your feet pressing down. Just notice, so your arms here make a big difference in this back bend. Take a breath in, as you exhale, release your arms long. Lift up a little bit higher, and then very slowly sweep your arms to your side. Other cheek comes down. Everything relaxes again. Bring your chin or forehead to center. Hands underneath your shoulders. Press back into tabletop. For me, I have to walk my knees in a little and then also separate them a little. Same thing with my hands. I need to walk them in, but I actually need to close the gap in my hands a little here. Take your right arm forward, leaving your left leg as a right angle. Lift it up exactly like that so that your knee is floating hip height and the sole of your foot is reaching toward the ceiling. So your left leg is bent. Here, send all your attention on your left glutes 
and lift and just pulse your left leg up like this five times. And slowly reach back. Your right hand meets your left foot or ankle. Maybe it doesn't touch. That's okay. Draw your right shoulder behind you. Lift your left foot up toward the ceiling a little. And look back over your right shoulder for floor dancer. And breathe. So this is still that back bending in a different way. And then slowly release with your exhale, reaching front to back. Take a breath in. As you exhale, hand and knee come down to your mat. Take a breath in here as you exhale. Hips go to the left, gaze over your right shoulder. So a little side stretch, a little lateral movement here. Then come back to center. Left arm lifts. So get your elbow out in front of you, bicep up by your ear. Keep your right leg as a right angle. Knee comes to hip height, soles reaching for the ceiling. All your attention goes on your right glute. You pulse up and down five times. And then keep your knee bent. Reach back for your foot. Maybe, maybe not. When you get there, left shoulder opens and comes behind you. Foot presses up and then gaze right over your left shoulder. Feeling any sort of imitation of the back bend you were doing on your belly? Maybe not. Maybe you feel no connection to that at all. Take another breath in. As you exhale, slowly release hand and foot, and then hand and knee. Come back down to your mat. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, sit back on toes curled under for broken toes pose. So if you did any extra running or walking this weekend, this will stretch out the back side of your feet. Stretch out your quadriceps a little bit. Stretch out your toes. Make any adjustments you need. And then slowly come away from that. Walk your knees forward. Seat goes on your mat, somewhere in the middle-ish. Moving into boat pose because it is spring, after all, and getting closer to summer with every day. So feet are hip distance apart. You can just come right in if you know boat pose and you practice it a lot. If you like to go in step by step, keep a hold of your hands right underneath your thighs. Keep pressing the front side of your spine long and up and forward. I like to tilt my chin up a little bit too. It will help balance things out. You will roll back a little when you lift your feet away from the floor. That's okay. What we're hoping to strengthen is our need to round into this. So keep your spine long and strengthen yourself that way. So maybe peel just your soles of your feet away from your mat. Notice how you came back, but keep lifting the front side of your spine up and forward. Lengthen your legs. Maybe hands come away from your thighs. And just breathe here. Just be willing to be in this V-sit boat pose. Shoulders can come away from your ears and relax down. Very slowly bend your knees. Put your hands behind your thighs and come back forward. Let yourself relax. Move around a little. We need to let go. We're going to move into that again. But this time, before you lift your feet away from your mat, walk your left foot in the center a little and cross your right ankle over your left ankle. Now start to maybe lean back just a little. Keep lifting your spine up and forward. Then lengthen your legs with your right ankle on top of your left and arms reaching forward, shoulders down and back. Let everything relax and just fire this up through your breath. And very slowly begin to bend your knees. Hands go behind your thighs. Come back forward. 
separate your feet. You know, we need to do this the other way. So walk your right foot in the center, cross your left ankle over. One more time, one more boat. With your hands, maybe behind your thighs, just roll back a little bit and then extend everything long. See with how you extend, when you reach your limbs out from center, that's where the real work for your center comes in, to stay grounded and strong, holding that weight of your limbs away from you. Breathe. Let any tension roll through. Take another breath in, and as you exhale, slowly come back out. Try not to race out of boat pose. And then relax your feet out to the edges of your mat. Hands go behind you to your mat. Take both knees to one side. Just pause there. Let your hip, let your psoas stretch a little. Both knees come back to center. Take both knees the other direction. Same idea. Let everything stretch and release a little bit. Back to center. Walk your hands in just a little. Feet come to hip distance apart for a seated half pigeon. Draw your right ankle up and over your left knee. Flex your right foot. So you start here and then just notice. What is your body calling for? Do you want your hands a little bit closer to your seat? That will make a difference. You could toe heel your left foot a little closer to your seat. And just breathe. Keeping your right foot flexed will keep your ankle working with your knee. Ankles and knees like to be together, especially when your knee moves away from your hip, which it's doing here. It's not in line with your hip anymore. It's to the outside. So seated half pigeon, just be willing to be here for a length of time. Anytime you spend time in a pose, that's where you start to feel change. So even if seated half pigeon is easy for you, you don't feel a lot, time spent here, you will get something. Set your eyes on one thing and just let your eyes relax. Let your mind relax, maybe finding pause, the length of an inhale in your thoughts, or the length of an exhale. Even that size pause is huge. See if you can work your shoulders away from your ears. So it's one of the tricky parts of seated half pigeon is your shoulders, your chest wants to close on the front side. See if you can maybe lengthen across your chest, drawing your shoulder blades together. They may not be able to come down. Maybe they will. Just play around with that a little bit and then come back to stillness and time spent here. Starting to relax this, you might start to just bend at your elbows. Let your hands come free, foot goes to the floor. Lengthen your legs long, then tuck your fingertips just underneath your seat, very, very little, and lower down onto your elbows. This is fish pose. Feet, are, feet and legs are together, front side of your spine, that same idea you had in boat of lifting it up and forward and long, maybe your head relaxes down toward the floor, maybe not. And if you have to leave your head, if you have to hold it up, just pay attention to how long you have to do that and release before everyone else comes out if you need to, it's okay. 
trying to stay out of letting your shoulders crunch up. Can you keep lifting your spine up and relaxing your shoulders down and back? Very tricky to do that in fish. And as your exhale, start to draw your head back up if it was relaxed back. Bend your knees, put your feet to the floor, and then same thing, walk your hands back up so now you can set up your half pigeon the other side. So left ankle is going to cross over your right knee. Ankle is flexed. Hands can come in closer. Maybe your right foot comes in closer. You know on this Side. It's a very different experience. So set your eyes and breathe. Notice where you stop. A lot of times I feel like our hips are gatekeepers to how far we can go. Sometimes it's your low back. Our injuries are gatekeepers, so you just pay attention to what they're telling you. And maybe they'll open the gate just a little and say, okay, you can go this far in. Maybe they open the gate a lot. If your space isn't heated, you may notice a big difference in how far you're able to go into some of these releases versus when you're at the heated studio. And that's okay. See if your shoulders can come down a little more, if your chest can open a little more, if you can lift the front side of your spine up and forward a little bit more. In these poses, in hip openers, it's either our knees coming toward our chest or away from our chest that creates tension. In this case, it's if you can get your left knee to move away from your chest is where you'll get more sensation. Strength of your legs could draw your knee away. Maybe the way you sit and press draws your knee away. And then slowly start coming away. Unless you need more time on this side, always pay attention to that. Left foot comes back down to your mat. Take your legs long again. And this time, lower your upper body down so that your forearms are on your mat. Not setting up for fish, but just letting yourself lengthen. Let your head come back and then slowly release your upper back down onto your mat as well. Now bend your knees again. Hands can come underneath your seat a little bit. Legs come up. If you would like to work into a different inversion, feel free. I'm going to keep it simple with legs up, pressing the soles of my feet to the ceiling, just letting my body Soften, it's time to begin to surrender a little bit. And some of you really, I've noticed, like inversions. And if you do, take your time for that. From here, move into happy baby. If you're in your inversion and you want to stay, you can stay. Happy baby, maybe a little side-to-side -side motion. Maybe a little back and forth. Let both feet go at the same time. Engage your belly. Arms come out to your side. Palms can be face up or down. And then slowly lengthen your legs, setting them down right into Shavasana. Heels out to the edges of your mat, maybe if you prefer Shavasana with knees bent, then the soles of your feet could come directly to the floor. Tuck your shoulders underneath you a little. If you're still in your inversion and enjoying that, stay. You can always take a Shavasana later, like in the next 10 minutes. Relax the muscles of your face. 
relax the back side of your head, relax your jaw, relax your neck. Begin to deepen your breath. If you want to stay in Shavasana, everything around you is encouraging you to stay, just stay. If you're ready to move out, begin to move your fingers, move your toes. Bending at your knees, roll over to your right side body. Just visualize your heart maybe floating in that space in your left chest. Being supported by the right side. The lessons that you learn on your mat being supported in this pause. Keeping your eyes closed, come up to a comfortable seat. Sit in your intention, sit in your heart space. Sit in your strength. Hands come together at heart center. Maybe a smile across your face, relaxing any muscles there. Finish your exhale. Take a deep, full breath in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Some knuckles come up to your third eye. Take a breath in. Folding forward. Exhale. Namaste. Thank you everyone for joining me this morning. Enjoy the rest.